how to avoid burnout as an empathetic, creative, intuitive entrepreneur. Maybe you, you have been diagnosed with ADHD, you see yourself as a highly sensitive individual and you have a lot of drive, a lot of potential, you want to go and get out there, you have drive in all of it, but you constantly struggle with chronic fatigue, exhaustion, emotional, spiritual, bankruptcy basically where you struggle to find a sense of fulfillment that is going to recharge your whole energy system. So then the big question for those who have been trying to climb the ladder in society, who have been trying to win the game of capitalism, but the game of capitalism is making them play with you. So now we have this massive debate to avoid burnout because basically we live in the burnout generation now is the debate or the big question should you avoid the capitalistic game of trying to level up is there an alternative way is there a better way so let's uh, discuss the different kind of options that basically we have right now so what do i know about this in about 2009-2010 I was uh, doing everything that I basically I was uh, able to do during the time. Uh, I came out of college, studied shipping and logistic management, I was working in a Dutch shipping company and uh, throughout the time 2008 with the banking crisis I saw that the maritime industry was getting going through a very difficult time. So what I started to do, I started to level up my game. I started to gain certifications in custom consultancy and learn more about custom declaration and import, export and all of that, international trade. And there I found myself of having a job where basically I was like part-time in the office and part-time uh, out in the port meet and greet captains managing a port agency department. But then I was leveling up and I had a full-time role in an office, in a cubicle, and it was driving me nuts. So I walked away, I was like, you know what? I need to go and work for myself. I gotta go and be my own boss. I gotta go, I, I know I have the potential to be an entrepreneur and to be better. So I learned everything that I could about internet marketing, affiliate marketing, SEO, make money online, and all of these great ways of climbing the capitalistic ladder is to gain more social status within our societal um, expectations and conditions that uh, we are in. So I was chasing down the money with going into affiliate marketing, network marketing, building teams and, and getting out there. And after two and a half years, I was finally able to make a bit of money on the internet, 10, 50,000 euros online. And I was in a couple of different kind of affiliates, marketing deals that I was promoting. But I now started to struggle with things around exhaustion, I felt emotional depleted, I lost the connection with what I was doing and I felt burned out. And I created loads of resistance against working, becoming better, self-improvement. And I wanted to walk away from everything that I was doing because I was feeling exhausted. Even worse, I moved to the capitalism, I moved to the capital of capitalism, the city of London in England. And this was even more draining my mental, emotional and spiritual energy levels. I moved into a relationship and I became almost like codependent within this relationship of being financially dependent on someone else. But I told myself, I am too sensitive, I'm too much of an empath, I'm too much of a highly sensitive person to go and chase down this narcissistic path of leveling up my social status in this hierarchy. And the only thing that I was basically yearning for is was to escape out into nature. And this is kind of like the whole contradiction we see now is that to win the game of capitalism is not to play it, but to walk away from it and go into a simple, slow living kind of lifestyle. And now you see these kind of videos on, on YouTube and whatnot about the, the slow living lifestyle and uh, just being very warm, cozy, have a cup of tea with the blankets and have a cat on your lap and enjoy the good life. But then you look at all these creators and influencers and what you're actually seeing they present the image 
of a slow living lifestyle. But the amount of time and energy they put into creating these type of videos, I can assure you that can also feel like a whole other rat race that you are not seeing because you look at how it's actually looking from the outside. A pretty girl in her nice summer dress running through a meadow and it looks like a lovely escape from reality, living in a cabin in the woods. But I think is that we cannot escape from this global religion of capitalism. Because whether you believe in it or don't believe in it, it is here for you. You can play it, you can try to win it, or you can decide to walk away from it and escape and live off the grid. But then you fall completely down back into basic wondering if you're, you should occupy your day with chopping locks in the wood and spend all your living hours searching for food. I think the majority of people are not quite ready for that. So what is the whole solution when you are a highly sensitive, creative, intuitive individual dealing with HSP, highly sensitive personality and you don't want to be this narcissistic, backstabbing ass kisser that we see the people in the modern corporate world are in is to look at this game from a different angle, a different perspective because you could also look, well, what is the alternative? Should we go and live in a socialistic society? I could ensure you, as a Dutch living in the Netherlands, that socialism ain't working either. Because socialism is basically capitalism for the, the global corporations wanting to dominate the whole scene. And leaving a communistic system of equality for everyone else. And what it means is that those who are not working almost have the same amount of options and accessibility than those who are working really hard. So you get this one part of the spectrum where loads of, let's say, single women having children who can basically live off of the social system the government have them in place and live off the government's support. But we also have, of course, this mass immigration from people who think like, okay, so this is paradise. Hundreds of years, North European nations have been colonizing my country. Now I come here to gain the benefits back from it. So socialistic countries are now backstabbing their own system and their own people by providing loads of benefits from people coming here from third world nations and countries thinking, well, I can just open up my hands and everything will be provided for me and housing will be provided for me. And those who are living here they get fall all the way underneath the list. If you're working in a socialistic country, basically you're stuck. You have very little options and you have very little access. Because if you would have, let's say, in just a beverage, just an above average salary, you don't get any access or options into social housing provided by the governments who are cheaply priced. They are not really nice houses either. So you get on a waiting list where basically those who want to get access to a social housing have to be on a waiting list and you are waiting and competing with maybe four or five, one thousand other people. So you could be waiting for a house for maybe five or ten years. And most of these social housing are being provided towards the immigration. Because the problem is, is of course, those who are living here see like working in a socialistic country, there's no benefits to gain here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work less. I'm going to work three, four days a week because if I have a lower income, then I will be eligible to get access to a cheaper social housing. So less and less people are actually working, making contribution to society. And then the government is like, okay, so from who are we going to raise the taxes? And that is from everybody who is basically working. So everybody who is working is working for those who are not working. So if you have an entrepreneurial spirit and you want to improve and get better in life, you want to level up, it is absolutely bloody pointless. Because how more you earn, how more you give back to the socialistic system. 
because capitalism is also like offering an opportunity for growth, personal developments, innovation. And what we're seeing here from, let's say, new developing countries like China and whatnot, they are providing new kind of innovations. Let's, let's take like the, the modern car brands in China. They are completely going to dominate European and US markets because the cars they are right now building, like build your dream and Wang Yan and whatnot. I can't even pronounce these names. The kind of technolo technological innovation, and although China might also be a little bit communistic, but it is like capitalism for the global corporations, they can innovate because of their cheap labor and European markets, US markets can never compete with that. So they're completely going to dominate over our European and US markets and we are going to buy their stuff. Why? Because it's cheaper and maybe the innovation and the technology is much more advanced of what European car brands can create. So before going any further and deeper into this whole political economical aspects, let's go and see how we stand here as highly sensitive, uncreative and intuitive entrepreneurs, empaths who have been looking to our situation and what it is that we can do with it. First of all, what is leading to burnout in the first place? If I can look back to my own personal experience, it is because we want to fill up a void. And what we are trying to do in our external world is following this path of ass kissing, backstabbing, narcissistic behavior that is further leading us further down into an individualistic lifestyle and isolation and loneliness and we are trying to plaster up this void that exists within us that is nothing more than we continue to live on this emotional dark age and we are only trying to plaster up with a fake inauthentic identity society has given to you this is how you should be it is kind of like an we have been conditioned by a false intrinsic motivation. Hundreds of years ago, we had a different kind of extrinsic motivation. If you don't do X, Y, Z, you get punished. Think about the school system. It kind of still works like that because it, the school system is based from values from our industrial revolution of where we uh, basically in the 18th and 19th century. And the school system is still based on that. That if you don't do X, Y, Z, you get punished. So it's an extrinsic motivation. But now we are conditioned with an intrinsic motivation. So now we have created a prison, like a matrix within our own minds. That if we don't plaster up our external self, our false self, we are basically a nobody. We are nobody with an empty void. And we are like a tiny little drop of water trying to survive in a desert. And our tiny little individualistic state of consciousness will be basically will be vaporized into an abyss, into a nothingness. And that is, of course, the path towards burnout, depression, loneliness, isolation and so forth. So we must come to realize like the expectations and the conditions. It's a social programming of narcissism that we are trying to plaster up on our deep empty voids that exist within us. It is realizing we live in the emotional dark ages because what we are trying to do is we are trying to prove our sense of worth, our sense, our self-worth by accomplishments. That is really what we're trying to do. So we are trying to outrun our own shadow that exists within us and here's a little kick in the butt we can never outrun our own shadow and although you might be plastering up you with capitalistic values with identifying yourself with brands like this is who i am deep down we still live or we we are robbing ourselves, and we are diving and we digging ourselves further into a spiritual bankruptcy but here's the kicker here's the truth 
We were born on planet Earth that is right now is dominated by the global religion of capitalism. Whether you believe in it or don't believe in it, capitalism is certainly believing in you. Whether you believe in politics or you don't believe in politics, politicians are doing whatever is in their favor against your sense of free will. So what do we do with it? It is basically like looking hundreds of years ago to our ancestors. Let's uh, look to our ancestors in our first industrial revolution, the time of our agriculture, the time when people believed there's, we have animistic values, there's the sea, there's the water, and we must obey and we must pray to the gods, the ocean of the sea to, for us as a, as a safe passage so we can go out and make a living as a fisherman, as a merchant trader and, uh, and whatnot. Because we were these tiny little individuals conquering the massive wilderness and, uh, and, and, and the elements. Now, if you would tell them, like maybe it's not a good idea to go and jump on your tiny little boat to go out on the sea and start fishing because you might end up in a burnout or you might end up with stress or anxiety or whatever. So it's better just to avoid going in your tiny little boat to go out on the sea and start fishing because you know you might your feelings might get hurt. What if you said that to your ancestors? They had basically no option. Because that's the things they had during the time in order to survive. So this is just really like a small comparison, you know, like maybe you could also tell your ancestors don't start picking berries in the woods to survive for the day because you might enc encounter a wolf or predator which is causing your stress levels to go up and we don't want that we want to be comfy right we want to be comfortable so uh, better not to go out in the woods because we might encounter a wolf or a scary fox that uh, might run after us um, if we have to pick the berries to survive for the day so better just to stay within the tribe within our comfort zone and uh, but if you told your ancestors that, you know, just stay in a tribe, be comfy and don't do anything because your stress levels might rise. You might be struggling with, uh, with anxiety or burnout or depression. They look at you like, mate, what are you talking about here? I got to go and eat for the day. What are you trying to tell me? So it's either live or die. And I think right now that's the same kind of situation. But instead of staying within this survival state that the majority of people are living in, we are also now entering a new kind of phase is where we can tune into a source of energy that can light up our fire so we don't burn out. And that's the true secret as an intuitive, empathetic, creative, ADD, ADHD kind of entrepreneur trying to become better in this world. And that is of course is to reconnect with your God-given purpose, your soul's mission and not to do the things because society expects from you to do it because it's a social construct and conditioning. Instead of trying to win this game we got to win and play a different kind of game. A game where we can tune into our highest self and is to reconnect with our God-given purpose. A purpose that fuels us through any kind of barrier or challenge or obstacle that we might be facing. And this is kind of really like that's part of the three pillars of energy management. And if you go to germanicwellness.com, I will go further and explain more about this whole concept of energy management. Because this is the foundation to build upon. So instead of trying to win the game that someone else has created for you, we got to go and create our own game in the way we want to win in life. If that kind of makes sense. So... If you want to share some thoughts on this, like you want to go and 
outplay this game someone else has given to you like only those in the top who have created this game can only win when you as an puppet is trying to dance under this kind of matrix top-down society or can you only win this game by not playing it and just go into spiritual bypassing or escapism or distract yourself by addictions, video games and whatnot because you can only win that kind of game or should we go and create our own game by tuning into our higher self I'm going to leave that question with you and that's for you to answer all right let me know what you think simply drop a comment below and uh, I will look forward to seeing you in one of my next videos take care for now